you're a catheter company <laughs> and you want to sell the most catheters, you should probably hire catheter users. Yeah, right? for sure. Like, so I guess that's kind of what I'm, I'm kind of getting at. And, and here I'll get even, even deeper. I really think YouTube and social media marketing is a way for disabled people to escape poverty um, and to not, and to be able to find a new career path and a new job and a new industry and a new world and a new market because a lot of people get hurt and when they get hurt, they usually can't do the job that they were doing before. Um, they may have been the sole breadwinner in their household. And currently a lot of people are starting to document their rehabilitation and recovery journeys using social media, whether it be YouTube, whether it be Instagram, um, wh whatever it may be. And there's a large following because people, able-bodied people and disabled people alike want to be inspired. They want to see the journey and see the vision. And we know from personal experience that being an influencer is a very big job. And most people don't get paid to do it because honestly, they're doing it for fun. They can build up their own, maybe merchandising. Maybe they can get some free stuff. Maybe a, a wheelchair company or like a catheter company will like give them, send them a box or give them a free wheelchair. But in my opinion, that's that's not okay. Like I don't because at that point, that the, the company is is using that free wheelchair at, as as marketing as a way to be like, ooh, look at this person is using our product now. And and in the world of disability and in the world of, of wheelchairs and stuff, we see what our peers are using and go, oh, I wanna buy that. You know, so it's it's a lot of on recommendation. And I, I think- I think that's just how the world works right now. No, I agree. And and this is where I'm, I'm talking about, like it's an inside job. If, if people, if companies that serve disabled people wanna do the most philanthropic and honestly, financially responsible and also helping out their customers escape poverty is by by paying them fairly for what they do for them so if a person is an athlete and and a company comes along and says i'm going to give you this wheelchair for free and say it's a five thousand dollar wheelchair that's cool that's great that athlete's going to use that wheelchair they're going to compete they're going to do a really good job but you got to start paying them too because that person is a representative of your brand it's not just an ambassadorship and it, don't call it a sponsorship because it's not a sponsorship it's literally a gift you are using that individual as a marketing device for your product. So therefore, that particular person who is an incredible athlete who's using your wheelchair, therefore, anybody else who wants to be an athlete in that sport picks out that wheelchair too. Yeah, it's not like Roger Federer is only using Wilson Rackets and that's the only payment he's getting. Is like, oh, I'm using Wilson Rackets. No, he's using Wilson Rackets, but he's being paid to use Wilson Rackets because he could go to any racket company and get people and get a free equipment at that level. I think the the problem is is some people come into this brand new and they don't have that ability where they're at the top of their game and they're able to just go around to any equipment manufacturer and go, yo. Give me this because I'm I'll use it all the time. They they'll they'll have the first company that it finally approaches them and they've been, oh my gosh, I've been trying to find a company that would finally give me a free wheelchair because I need a new one and I haven't been able to afford it, but like I'll take this as the payment. And I think that's probably fine. Like right off the bat. I'm not like, I'm not saying in that con like it's it's sure it's fine, but I think but I think if they but if they weren't poor, if they weren't in poverty, they could pay for their own wheelchair. Yes, I agree. But and, and if and if but they also might think like, oh, this is cool. I think a lot of like influencers, not just in the disability space, go that route. They like getting a lot of free shit. Like it's just fun, you know. Like you, you're constantly just getting sent free packages and all this stuff, and you're kind of you know you're endorsing them, but that's also kind of the price you're paying for getting it for free. Because like, let's not get it twisted. The 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 thing that you are getting to use is also a benefit. Like, it's not like it's worth nothing to you. I'm not disagreeing with that, but I'm saying if someone is taking the route of be trying to become a social media influencer, to have a business, to make money, to not have to be on a social security disability check and to make the equivalent amount of money that they were making before they got disabled, it's time for the disability community businesses to start paying fairly. And that takes two sides. That takes one, the companies agreeing to pay fairly, and that also takes the influencers standing up for themselves and, and asking for the right amount of money and also knowing 
how to ask for that money. So I'm gonna give you guys a huge tip right now. If you're a wheelchair user who's got a decent sized Instagram or a decent sized YouTube and companies are sending you a bunch of stuff for free for you to review on your page or on your website or to promote, they are using you for marketing, which means that you need to charge them for marketing. How you charge them for marketing is you go to a website called socialbluebook.com. When you're on socialbluebook.com, you log in with your account, whether it's a YouTube account, whether it's an Instagram account, whether it's a Facebook account. And when you log onto the account, it pulls up all your data and all your analytics and it shows you the value of each post. So if you put an Instagram story, that has a certain amount of cost. An Instagram story where they tag the brand, that's a cost. A picture, that's a cost. A video, that's a cost. A a, a, a full video, and we're just talking Instagram. Okay, now let's jump over to YouTube. A video that you briefly mentioned something costs something. A video where you spend 60 seconds talking about something in built, a built-in commercial, that has a cost. A video that is fully dedicated to the product or service, that also has a cost. So initially, and I see so many, and you you companies that may be listening right now don't think I haven't noticed. And there's some key players that take a, a massive, massive advantage of disabled people because you know you can not pay them at all or you can underpay them because you know that they are afraid to make money. Because as a disabled person, if you are already on disability check, if you make money, that money gets deducted from your disability check. So let's say in a, in a month you get paid $1,000 from your disability check, but you make $500 on your own, they cut $500 from your disability check. So that means in a year, if you make 12 grand by working hard on your own, you lose 12 grand of government assistance and your insurance on top of that. So what needs to happen is the companies need to find a way and the influencers need to find a way for to speak up for themselves and and demand what they're owed and the companies need to pay for that for those marketing dollars to where you can double the amount of income that you make so someone who's making a thousand dollars a month needs to figure out how to make two thousand dollars a month in order to replace the twelve thousand dollars and then have enough money to buy their own insurance and then there, there's also room to scale at that point. There's room to grow as the following grows, as the video views grow, as the professionalism grows, as the products and services they deal with grow. You know, don't be an ambassador. Don't sign up for some link for some 30% code. No, you are a direct to consumer marketing machine. Your audience trusts you, your audience likes you, and your audience believes in you. So the second you say, oh, I've got these cool adaptive pants or this cool wheelchair that I'm using, all 500 to 5,000 to 50,000 to 100 to 500,000 people that follow you, you've just endorsed that for nothing. Do you really think LeBron James gonna be endorsing Nike for nothing? You think he's gonna be wearing Nikes for nothing? Hell no. This is what I'm saying. This is the only industry where the manufacturers of the products that serve the disabled person are actively taking financial advantage of the disabled people. And that pisses me off. Because they know that if they underpay them, they're like, they know that if they pay them a certain amount, they're going to lose their disability. Like they know that for a fact. So that they're they're comfortable underpaying them, and that's where like you're saying it's the only industry that does it. Definitely, there are other industries with influencers that work entirely off of like like just not really paying people and like you know taking advantage of micro influencers. I've seen that a lot. Like if you send a free product to someone that has like five thousand followers, they'll probably post about it because they're just grateful to get the free thing because they're not used to that. So it's like taking advantage of people with like a smaller following or whatever. But it's in this case, it's taking advantage of the fact that we know that like you're probably not working like a normal job. You're you're getting disability assistance. If we pay you what we what we should be paying you, you would you would lose that disability assistance, and we know that. So we're just gonna take advantage of it and say like, oh, we'll throw you like a couple hundred bucks or whatever, and a free and wheelchair. Here's a couple. Here's here's five hundred bucks for showing up at a trade show, and here's a wheelchair. That's. No, that's not okay. Because any other industry, if you showed up at a trade show, if you were that 
important to the company that they hired you to show up at a trade show, that's multiple thousands of dollars. Let's not get it twisted. Like these companies, a lot of them are making stupid money. Stupid, stupid, stupid. And money. they're investing marketing Hand dollars over fist. If you looked at their entire marketing budget, versus what they're paying like influencers and that's the other thing that's that's hard to measure is like what is the roi of like you using this wheelchair like from uh you know we'll, we'll give them a shout out like hands-on concepts like you're rocking a hands-on concepts wheelchair all day like yes you are in you are influencing people to buy a hands-on concept wheelchair but Heavily. like but we also have two major videos on our channel for sure. But the thing is um, about it is like, let's say you were just an ambassador for hands-on concepts and you could use a promo code with them or whatever on like link in bio, use my promo code. The chances of people like actually using it may be pretty high if you're always advertising it. But like most of the time, these ambassador programs and whatever, they're just like another ping in people's head because like the typical marketing thing is like you got to have like eight points of contact before you're going to buy something like you've got to hear about it at least like a handful of times before you just buy. It's not like I see in Richard's Instagram for the very first time and I go, Oh wow, that's a really cool wheelchair. And I immediately go buy it. Like that just does not happen. You just have to see and it. So because multiple, you're an ambassador, times, yeah. you would, you're thinking like, Oh, well, yeah, that's fine. Like I'll just get a promo code on my website and they'll track how many times people use it. And like, nope. that'll be an accurate measurement of like how, how my, how much my influence is. And you're like kind of, bummed at the end of the nope. month where you're like ah two or three people use my promo code i guess i guess i'm not as influential as i really think i am and that's just where it's just not true because bad people are are you are you've hit them in a part of their brain that is affecting their buying uh power and like maybe richard has a promo code and i have a promo code and i've just been pushing it way harder but maybe you're a bigger fan of richard and then at the end of the day richard was really the one that first introduced you to this product but then you end up using my promo code because i'm always pushing it all the we time. we did that when we bought you know? squarespace yeah we're like who do we know that's an influencer that does squarespace ads oh this person this person and this person they're like who do we like the most we're like oh we like that guy the most and then we just use his promo code yeah because like squarespace sponsors so many people and I'm squarespace like, also pays them a lot of money 100 yeah. percent uh-huh uh, so it's like the, when I say, when I say like, if you want to look at an industry that does a, does it really well, that's sneaking into the disability industry is the CBD companies. And the reason why is because cannabis slash CBD, you cannot market. You can, no magazine prints allowed, no radio ads allowed, no television commercials allowed, no Facebook, nothing is allowed. Nothing. CBD, CBD, CBD is the highest regulated because it's cannabis and cannabis is still federally illegal. So you have to, you're only huh. allowed to do influencer marketing only. That's why. And no, cause there's CBD sponsored, um, race cars. Dude, that, that's, I know this that's, girl. that's, that's, that's not billboards and magazines. And like, that's, it's a different class of lifetime. There's CBD commercials on the TVs, but that, I think but, it's but within that's, lifetimes. But that's lifetimes TV network or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. It's I mean, like, it's like that, tobacco. That, it's just like tobacco. It's but tobacco is not allowed to have it. Like it's like a it's a shill company that reps it. Like there's literally race cars that say CBD MD on them. I guess what I'm just trying to say is there are plenty of industries that have figured out influencer marketing that have figured out and also companies. By the way, you know that you're going to make four to five times that money back, right? You do know that sometimes on one sale that influencer marketing is the most powerful form of marketing because that's the equivalent of like watching your favorite TV show and your favorite character turning around in the middle of the show and being like, look at how cool this shirt is. I like wearing this shirt because it's it's comfortable and it doesn't ruin over time. If you want to get a shirt, it's better than go that. to this website it's and then they get back that. to their shirt. It's a personal relationship. We are direct to consumer personal relationships. And it's like, if you guys are going to spend multiple thousand dollars on a booth, if you guys are going to spend multiple thousand dollars going to expos, if you're going to spend multiple thousands of dollars doing events, if you're going to do multiple thousand dollars um, doing magazines, how about you just pull one of those and hey, guess what? We're in the middle of a pandemic. So you know what's not happening? Events and expos. So I know you guys got big budgets now. You guys got multiple thousands of dollars just sitting around. So, Literally. so why don't you take that from your marketing budget in 2020, which by the way, you planned for because the pandemic wasn't here before 2020. Hey, calling all of you out right now. Hope you enjoyed that clip. If you'd like to see the full episode, click right here. If you'd like to subscribe, click here. If you'd like more clips, we got two more right over here.